you for agreeing to come testify as part of this committee's investigation into Russia. I realize that this hearing has been obviously the focus of a lot of Washington in the last few days. But the truth is many Americans who may be tuning in today probably haven't focused on every twist and turn of the investigation. So I'd like to briefly describe, at least from this Senator's standpoint, what we already know and what we're still investigating. To be clear, this investigation is not about relitigating the election. It's not about who won or lost, and it sure as heck is not about Democrats versus Republicans. We're here because a foreign adversary attacked us right here at home, plain and simple, not by guns or missiles, but by foreign operatives seeking to hijack our most important democratic process, our presidential election. Russian spies engaged in a series of online cyber raids and a broad campaign of disinformation, all ultimately aimed at sowing chaos to undermine public faith in our process, in our leadership, and ultimately in ourselves. And that's not just this senator's opinion. It is the unanimous determination of the entire U.S. intelligence community. So we must find out the full story. What the Russians did, and candidly, as some other colleagues have mentioned, why they were so successful. And more importantly, we must determine the necessary steps to take to protect our democracy and ensure they can't do it again. Chairman mentioned elections in 2018 and 2020. In my home state of Virginia, we have elections this year in 2017. Simply put, we cannot let anything or anyone prevent us from getting to the bottom of this. Now, Mr. Comey, let me say at the outset, we haven't always agreed on every issue. In fact, I've occasionally questioned some of the actions you've taken. But I've never had any reason to question your integrity, your expertise, or your intelligence. You've been a straight shooter with this committee and have been willing to speak truth to power, even at the risk of your own career, which makes the way in which you were fired by the President ultimately shocking. Recall we began this entire process with the President and his staff first denying that the Russians were ever involved and then falsely claiming that no one from his team was ever in touch with any Russians. We know that's just not the truth. Numerous Trump associates had undisclosed contacts with Russians before and after the election, including the President's Attorney General, his former National Security Advisor, and his current Senior Advisor, Mr. Kushner. That doesn't even begin to count the host of additional campaign associates and advisors who've also been caught up in this massive web. We saw Mr. Trump's campaign manager, Mr. Manafort, forced to step down over ties to Russian-backed entities. The National Security Advisor, General Flynn, had to resign over his lies about engagements with the Russians. And we saw the candidate himself express an odd and unexplained affection for the Russian dictator while calling for the hacking of his opponent. There's a lot to investigate. Enough, in fact, that then-Director Comey publicly acknowledged that he was leading an investigation into those links between Mr. Trump's campaign and the Russian government. As the director of the FBI, Mr. Comey was ultimately responsible for conducting that investigation, which might explain why you're sitting now as a private citizen. What we didn't know was at the same time that this investigation was proceeding, the President himself appears to have been engaged in an effort to influence or at least co-opt the director of the FBI. The testimony that Mr. Comey has submitted for today's hearing is very disturbing. For example, on January 27th, after summoning Director Comey to dinner, the President appears to have threatened the director's job while telling him, quote, I need loyalty. I expect loyalty. At a later meeting, on February 14th, the President asked the Attorney General to leave the Oval Office 
so that he could privately ask Director Comey, again, quote, to see way clear to letting Flynn go. That is a statement that Director Comey interpreted as, he, as a request that he drop the investigation connected to General Flynn's false statements. Think about it. The President of the United States asking the FBI director to drop an ongoing investigation. And after that, the President called the FBI director on two additional occasions, March 30th and April 11th, and asked him again, quote, to lift the cloud on the Russia investigation. Now, Director Comey denied each of these improper requests. The loyalty pledge, the admonition to drop the Flynn investigation, the request to lift the cloud on the Russia investigation. Of course, after his refusals, Director Comey was fired. The initial explanation for the firing didn't pass any smell test. Somehow, Director Comey was fired because he didn't treat Hillary Clinton appropriately. Of course, that explanation lasted about a day because the President himself then made very clear that he was thinking about Russia when he decided to fire Director Comey. Shockingly, reports suggest that the President admitted as much in an Oval Office meeting with the Russians the day after Director Comey was fired. Disparaging our country's top law enforcement official as a quote-unquote nut job, the President allegedly suggested that his firing relieved great pressure on his feelings about Russia. This is not happening in isolation. At the same time the President was engaged in these efforts with Director Comey, he was also, at least allegedly, asking senior leaders of the intelligence community to downplay the Russian investigation or to intervene with the Director. Yesterday, we had DNI Director Coates and NSA Director Admiral Rogers, who were offered a number of opportunities to flatly deny those press reports. They expressed their opinions, but they did not take that opportunity to deny those reports. They did not take advantage of that opportunity. In my belief, that's not how the President of the United States should behave. Regardless of the outcome of our investigation into the Russia links, Director Comey's firing and his testimony raise separate and troubling questions that we must get to the bottom of. Again, as I said at the outset, I've seen firsthand how seriously every member of this committee is taking his work. I'm proud of the committee's efforts so far. But let me be clear. This is not a witch hunt. This is not fake news. It is an effort to protect our country from a new threat that quite honestly will not go away anytime soon. So Mr. Comey, your testimony here today will help us move towards that goal. I look forward to that testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Uh, Director